In this video I'm going to guide you through a basic workflow exercise that will allow you to draw three-dimensional shapes in SketchUp for schools. The exercise is going to be to draw nine rectangular blocks such as you see here and these blocks are positioned using the grid lines that you can see the dashed lines on between them. So before we begin what you do need to do is start with a blank model file. It's going to ask you to work with dimensions in millimeters and I'm going to refer you to the SketchUp for Schools part 6 video for a blank template that I've pre uh, produced previously and the link is up on your screen. I'll also try to include the link in the description of the video below. Uh, once you've got your blank document open and you've got your dimensions set right, what you do need to do is save the model with a new name and you do that by hitting the three horizontal bars which are in the top left not top left, sorry, top left of this workspace. Uh, you'll get a menu that drops down, you hit save as. I would suggest you name the file basic workflow exercise and place it in your SketchUp folder on Google Drive. The basic workflow that we're going to do is going to start with you determining the location and the orientation and you need to position your object, and that means you're talking about the position of your object relative to the origin and to other parts of the model. Uh, we're going to use the intersection of guidelines to determine location of one point in the block for this exercise and the orientation of the block relative to red, green and blue axes is part of what we're going to be doing and that's going to be on the length, width and height. Uh, then we're going to work on to drawing the base shape. We're first going to draw a 2D base surface with correct length and width and all of ours are going to be rectangles and then we're going to make the object three-dimensional. And we're going to do that by extruding it into a three-dimensional shape with a, the correct height. Uh, and you'll see that I've mentioned correct length, width and height. Dimensions do matter. They must be accurate and precise. Now this basic workflow that we have listed up here is only the beginnings of a real workflow for SketchUp. As you develop your knowledge, we will be adding steps on the end. And we will most likely not be making a big fuss about the first one of determining location and orientation. That's going to become implicit. So on future videos that you watch, you might see we start with draw the base shape and make the object three-dimensional and we'll go on to a few steps beyond that. But for now, what we're trying to do is just draw our first shapes, three-dimensional shapes in SketchUp and this workflow will do us just fine. So back to the matter of dimensions. Here we see the nine blocks. I've labeled them A through to I and I've given you a length, width and height and you'll notice the colors. The length is in red because we measure the um, length along the red axis. The width is green, we're going to measure that along the green axis and the height is blue, we're going to measure that upwards in the direction of the blue axis. You'll notice here I've got the guidelines need to be 150 millimeters apart. Now I'd suggest you either pause this video, write down the dimensions, maybe take a screenshot or otherwise you're just going to have to follow along as I go through the exercise for you. Alright, so it's over to SketchUp. Uh, please do follow along. Uh, as I'm working, please work. Please, as I draw one shape, please draw that shape yourself. Uh, pause the video while you do what you've just seen me do and then you might want to rewind and repeat uh, to see what I've done and please do that as often as you like or need. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to move over to SketchUp. So the first thing I need to do is I need to set out the grid for where I'm going to be placing the uh, blocks. And I'm going to place the blocks on intersections of guidelines. And guidelines are laid out using the tape measure tool. Shortcut is T. So you might see that I switch across to tools at various times without coming across to the tools menu. But I'm looking at this one here that says tape measure. And you'll see I have a tape measure here. And I'm going to start by snapping to the green axis. You can see that little green dot. So I'm going to click once. I'm going to drag over to the right. You can see my arrow is red, which means I'm doing it in the direction of the red axis. And you'll also see in the bottom right corner, I have length and currently it says 376 millimeters. I only want 150, but what I'm going to do is just click. There goes my line. It's in the wrong place. So all I do now, I don't even bother moving my mouse, trying to do anything like that. I just immediately type 150. You'll see the value changing in the length box at the bottom right. I hit enter and you can see the guideline moves into the correct place. So I'm going to do that one more time and I'm going to just drop that there and type 150 and away we go. I can do the same for the intersecting lines. I'm going to drag. That's actually already snapped to 150. I could probably leave it at that as long as I know it is snapping to precisely 150. 
I encourage you to always type your dimensions because you can be sure of it unless you've got something external to snap onto. SketchUp does know I've done a couple of guidelines already at 150. It's thinking I want to do the same again. It's correct. I can drop that down for there. Now, if I come along here, you'll see that I have intersections that I can snap onto. I can snap onto line. I can snap onto intersection. I can snap onto the origin. Um, and over here, it does tell me that I have an intersection and suggest that I can snap onto it. My experience, however, is that that's not necessarily the case. So one of the things I am going to do is I'm going to pull another construction line. Now, this is no longer grabbing a line, so I'm going to hit Escape. In fact, I'm going to hit Space, which is the same as coming back to my Select tool. And I'm going to select um, Tape Measure tool again. There's probably an easier way of doing what I've just done, but this works for me. I'm going to pull another construction line and I'm going to come back onto the green axis where it says zero millimeters. I've got a red dot, so it's snapping onto the axis. I'm going to do that and I'm going to do the same again. And you see this is SketchUp does sometimes do that. Um, and what I want is I want that line in parallel with the guideline and snap to zero millimeters. Now that means I definitely do have an intersection here at the origin. I have one there, I have one there. And all up, I have nine different intersections, which I'm going to use for my nine shapes. Um, you can also see this is not taking up much space on my screen. So I can zoom. I'm using a wheeled mouse, a scroll wheel. So I can roll my scroll wheel, and that will zoom me in. If not, well, you can use zoom here. And that will do the same thing as I click and move my mouse backwards and forwards. Or to get to this, I can use the letter Z. So there I have my grid. I'm ready for my first uh, block to be drawn. Now, if you remember the basic workflow, I said determine my position and orientation and location, whatever I want to do. So I'm going to firstly come here to my rectangle tool because I'm going to draw my base and my base is going to be a rectangle. So I'm going to start it here on the origin. So I'm snapping to origin. I'm going to pull it out. And what you can see in the bottom right hand corner in the dimensions box, you can see the dimensions changing. And it has two dimensions. One of them is 133 millimeters. The other one's 64. If I keep on this way, I'm now sitting at 325 and 70. So obviously that 323 or 325 millimeters has been measured along the red axis. The red um, axis between the red and the blue is the front surface of the shape in SketchUp. So that's the one I'm going to use to measure my length. My second dimension there, the 70, is going to be my width of my shape because it's the width of my base and that's measured along the green axis. So what I can do is I can just draw a rectangle. I can click a second time. That's placed a rectangle. You can see it's 123 by 73 currently in the dimensions box in the bottom corner. But what I want is I want it to be 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. So I type 50 comma 50 and I hit enter and that creates that block. Now you can't see the difference at this stage between length and width because they're the same but some of the other blocks you will see that the case. So I've positioned my block. I've mentioned it. I've uh, dimensioned it. I've given or drawn the base and dimensioned it. They have the both the same dimension. The next step in my workflow is to turn it into three dimensions. And I do that by coming over here to the push pull tool. I select that. I come and I highlight the surface and I pull up. I want this 10 millimeters high. I've pulled it 20. That doesn't matter. All I do is I've got the correct direction that I wanted to pull it, and I now, having released the mouse, press type 10, hit enter, and there's my first block. So, at this point, pause the video. I should have done this perhaps before you started the block, the first block, but pause the video, set out your grid, 150, 150, 150, and then come back and draw your first block here. So you place a rectangle, rectangle tool, snap on the corner, drag it out, drop it, click to drop a rectangle, type 50, 50. You do not need to move your mouse or your cursor into the toolbar. It doesn't work. So just as soon as you click to push place the rectangle, type 50, 50 and enter. That will size the base. You come across to push pull, pull up, and as soon as you release the mouse, you type in 10 and enter, and that will give you the size. So pause the video, please, and do that now. Okay, now we're going to do the second block. Now this one, once again, is going to have a length of 50. This time it's going to have a width of 60 and a height of 
10. Uh, and I'm going to place this one at the intersection that is still on the red axis but this intersection here. Now note it snaps, I have a little red cross and I have the word intersection. If I just snap on there it's on line, if I just put it there it's nowhere in particular. I am very particular about the fact that I want that intersection. So when I get that there I click once, I drag my rectangle in the direction I want it and click twice. My length on the red axis is 50, comma, my width on the green axis is 60. You can see the dimensions being typed into the dimensions box bottom right of the screen. And I hit enter and it resizes that box. I now come across to push pull or I can use the letter P to get that tool up. I highlight the surface. I pull it up and release. And this time I'm going to type 20 and I'm going to hit enter. I'd like you to pause now and do the same thing. Okay, so from here it's pretty well rinse and repeat. We're going to come to this intersection here. I'm going to use the R key for my rectangle. Uh, I'm going to snap onto my intersection. I'm going to pull a rectangle like that. And then I'm going to get the dimensions, which in this case are 70 millimeters along the uh, red axis. No, my mistake, it's 140 millimeters along the red axis and 70 millimeters on the green axis and I think there is a mistake on the dimension screen that I put up originally so please just take note of that. I'd like it in this orientation, it'll work better for us. So there'll be 140 millimeters along the red axis and 70 millimeters along the green and we're going to push pull using the letter P and we're going to pull that up 30. Uh, so maybe pause and do that now. All right, we're going to do the fourth one and again more of the same rectangle tool. Snap to this intersection in this case, drop my rectangle. My dimensions are going to be uh, 55 and 90. And this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. The pattern that I have is this block here is going to be 10 millimeters um, tall. These two are going to be 20 millimeters tall. These three here, here, and here are going to be 30 millimeters tall. This one and this one will be 40, and this one will be 50. But the point is, this is the same height as this one. So when I do the push pull, instead of bringing it up, dropping it, and typing, I can bring my cursor over here and I can snap it to the edge or to the surface or the corner, the end point, wherever I want. I can just snap on there and release. And what I now know is that this is exactly the same height as that. So I typed in 20 millimeters. That means that this is an accurate 20 millimeters. And that does the job just fine. So why don't you pause, draw this rectangle. That would be 55, 90, and then pull it up, but reference off the surface to get your height. Please do that now. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the exercise and you're going to watch and please follow along as you need to. Um, but I'm going to do this reasonably quickly because the video is dragging on. So we're just doing rectangle tool. I'm going to narrate as I go along. Uh, snap, drag, drop. Type in my dimensions. This is E, so that is 60, 55. Enter. Uh, push, pull. Same height as that. There we go. Rectangle tool. Snap, drag, drop. Dimensions here are 50, 40. Uh, enter, push pull, and this one needs to be its own height, which is 40. So I'm going to type that number in. You may want to pause and do these two. Otherwise, I'm continuing. Rectangle tool, snap to the intersection, drag, drop. The dimensions I want here are 65, 85. Enter. And the height in this case is the same as this one here, 30 millimeters. Rectangle tool, snap to the intersection, drag, drop, push, pull. Oh, my mistake. I didn't actually get the dimensions right. So let me just show you what we're going to do. I can use the erase tool if I wish, and I can come and I can erase. But if I erase this line, I'm also going to lose the, the guideline. So let me just 
undo both of those. An easier way to do this at this point is going to be to double click or triple click if I like because it'll do the same thing but double click will select everything and hit the delete key. So let me try that again now. Rectangle tool, snap, drag, click. Dimensions here are 70 comma 100. Enter, push pull and I can align with the top of this block here. Last one, rectangle tool, snap. Oh, so what you see here is that it's picked up a different axis. If I drew there, it would draw a vertical uh, rectangle and it would actually snap to that. So that would give me both the length and the height of precisely 140 and 110 and 40 millimeters. That's obviously not what I want. So I just need to drag out until you can see I have a blue rectangle like that. That tells me that the rectangle itself is aligned or is perpendicular to the blue axis. Uh, since I'm getting it there, I'm just going to click. It's very much not the size I want. I want 80, 80, but it'll fix itself up. Push pull, this one has to come up 50. I have nothing else on there that's 50, so I have to type the number. Space to remove that. So that's the whole exercise. Uh, a reminder that what we're going to be doing is uh, for the workflow is determining where we start the shape that we're about to draw. And then we're going to draw a base shape, and I've drawn all my base shapes on the uh, plane that is through the red and the green uh, axes. In other words, it's perpendicular to the blue axis, but I've drawn them all on that plane. You did see that I could start my two dimensional shape on a different plane if I wanted. Uh, once I have my base shape in place, I'm using push pull to turn it into a three dimensional shape. At all times, I'm being accurate with my dimensions. I'm typing when I need to, but if I have something that has already been accurately dimensioned, I can snap to that and do the reference and that'll be a whole lot quicker. Um, and that's the basic workflow that we're going to be doing. So just to wrap up, what I plan to do here is just show you that there are a number of tools that we have used during the course of this video. So I'm going to put up a list of tools and of videos that you might find useful and I will be putting this list into the description of the video as well. And then also a reminder that you didn't always see me go to the toolbar on the left. Sometimes I just used a shortcut and those shortcuts are here. Uh, and I'm going to re re um, refer you to the video Introduce to SketchUp for Schools Part 4 which deals with keyboard shortcuts and there is the link which I will also put into the description of the video. So I hope that's been helpful. I uh, taught you how to draw basic blocks. It is the initial skill that you need to do everything else. Um, it's very seldom that we'll work only with rectangular blocks like this. There will be modifications that we will need to make as we go along. Uh, but first you need to get into a three-dimensional shape before you can start making it a different three-dimensional shape. So hopefully this has helped and um, I look forward to having you watch the next video that I do which will take this one step further.